All right, you rock stars, this is the last video of the chapter, section 4.6, polynomial inequalities and rational inequalities. So a big idea from this section is going to be, we're going to assume you know how to graph. We've spent the past couple of sections uh, graphing stuff like crazy, and now this is one of the applications of graphing. So part of it is going to be just assuming that we know how to graph things. And uh, and so what you can do is, uh, if you are a pro at graphing, then you can just use Desmos to graph. So let me show you what I mean. Here's example one. You have to solve an inequality. You have to figure out when this crazy quadratic expression is greater than zero. Well, you could write a related function. Uh, just take all this and make it equal to f of x, and then graph it. And so when is the graph going to be greater than zero. Well, you can see from the graph that it has zeros of negative one and five. And so everywhere here, it's going to be greater than zero. And everywhere here, it's going to be greater than zero. So therefore, just looking at the graph, you used Desmos to figure out that the original inequality is going to be greater than zero from negative infinity to up to negative one, not including negative one and then also from 5 to positive infinity. We got these numbers here from the zeros, and then we got the fact that these are not included by this greater than symbol. Now, if you don't have Desmos on a, in, say, a quizzing situation or whatever, then you have to uh, find the zeros, that's negative 1 and 5, and then you can assume that there's going to, the zeros are going to split the entire uh, interval of, you know, the entire x-axis up into three parts, to the left of the first zero, in between the two zeros, and to the right of the uh, second zero. And you have to take test points. Negative 2, comma 7, for example, shows up on the graph right here. And you can see that the y value is positive. The sine of f of x is positive. The 0, comma, negative 5 is right here. That produces a negative value for the function. And then 7, 16 produces a positive value. So the answer is going to be whenever the function is greater than 0, whenever these intervals are positive. So not the negative interval, but the two positives. Let's do that again. Let's say you have to solve this and figure out when exactly x, what for what exactly, what values of x exactly are going to be greater than zero. And so you can see here, you've got, if you were to graph it, if you graph the related function, f of x is equal to all of this, then you can see sometimes it's greater than zero and sometimes it isn't. The answer is whenever it is greater than zero. And it's greater than zero on these two intervals, from negative one to zero, from negative one to zero, not including negative one, not including zero, and then from 1 to infinity, not including 1. Those are all the, for, on those intervals, that's where you would have uh, this function greater than 0. Now, if you didn't have Desmos, then what you could do is you could just assume that the three zeros split the x-axis up into 1, 2, 3, 4 different intervals. So negative 1, 0 and positive 1 are all the, num the numbers that are not included in these intervals. And you have to take test points. f of negative 2 comma negative 6, that would be negative. This test point that's on this interval would be positive. This test point, this should be a positive 1. This test point here is going to produce a negative value. This test point 1 half is going to be right here, produces a negative value. And then this test point, 2, is going to produce a positive value because it's up here. So the answer is going to be any time you have, in this case, uh, the positive test points. So the positive test point here, negative 1, comma 0, and 1 to infinity here. That's whenever the inequality is going to be greater than 0. Next example. Uh, this is pretty complex. You can see here, you've got this huge inequality. You have to figure out when, for what x values is this inequality going to be true. Well, if you take these two terms and subtract them over to the other side, you get this less than or equal to 0. And then you could graph the related function. f of x is equal to all of this. 
And if you check out the notes from section 4.42, example 5, we actually did this exact inequality. And uh, we produced that the zeros would be negative 1, 2 thirds, 2 plus or minus the square root of 2. Wow. We guessed negative 1, used synthetic division, we eliminated it down to 2 thirds as the next zero, and then we had to use the quadratic formula to produce these. So, once you know those things, you can, say, you can see from the graph that it produces 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros produce 5 intervals, and here they are. 1, 2, if you zoom in here, you get 3, then 4, 5. 3 reds and 2 yellow intervals. Again, this is a zoomed-in version of what's going on right here. And so you have to figure out, for what of these intervals is it going to be less than or equal to zero? And it's less than or equal to zero on this interval and this interval, which goes from negative 1 up to 2 minus the square root of 2. And then from 2 thirds, you can see it's 0 0.6667, 2 thirds all the way up to 2 plus the square root of 2, which is over here. Now, why are we using brackets? We're using brackets because we're allowed to have it equal to 0. So these zeros here are included in the intervals. They're included in the answer because the related function could equal 0, and, and this would still be true. So the test points are included. The zeros are included in the answer. Let's do the same thing with rational inequalities. Let's say we had to solve not a polynomial, but a rational expression. And when is that less than 0? Well, you can graph f of x is equal to 3x over x plus 6 and figure out when that is less than 0. Now, there's something that we want to uh, distinguish. There's something slightly different. It's uh, critical values. And so you need to figure out where the critical values are, where what are the x values where either the function is equal to 0 or just the denominator is equal to 0. So here in this particular case, in this function, we can see that the function here is equal to 0 when the numerator is equal to 0. That's a x equals 0 right here. That's a critical value. And then we'll figure out when the denominator is equal to 0. That's here at x equals negative 6. So this is also a critical value. We, can, we should split up the x-axis into all the critical values. Now before, on the previous page, we did just when is the function equal to 0. Well, and that's, that's what we did here. But then we also have to include when is the denominator equal to 0. So the function is equal to 0 at x equals 0 here. And the denominator is equal to 0 when x is equal to negative 6. That divides the interval up into three different regions. And this is a positive, negative, positive. We're, what we're looking for is when is this function going to be less than 0? And it's going to occur right here in this middle interval, from negative 6 to 0, not including negative 6 and not including 0. Let's do that again. So we've got this crazy inequality. And if you set it all equal to, if you bring the, this in term over, then it becomes this inequality. And here's the related function. You can graph the related function. And uh, just using Desmos, just so you can see that it comes into one, two, three, four different intervals. The critical values are negative four, you can see that right here, and positive five, and also one half. One half is where the function itself is equal to zero. When is this all going to be greater than or equal to zero? Well, I see two intervals on the graph where they, where they are greater than or equal to zero. This one right here and this one. This one right here is, can be described as the interval from one half to five. And remember, one half is, we got one half from solving this uh, equal to zero or just looking at the graph and using Desmos. And we're also going to include 1 half because it could equal 0. So that's how, why we use a bracket. We're going up to 5. We're not including 5 because 5 is actually an asymptote. It's undefined at 5. And I want you to, f to describe to me what this interval is. Once you do that, then you can start on 4f, copy the problem list, and do the first problem. And I'll see you in class.